Well, for many of you that follow the stable.ca and, and some that don't follow stable.ca, you know that this is a, a normal setting for us, uh, usually on the move, going somewhere, doing something. Um, but I did want to bring a video and give it to the, the broader public, just talking about the horses that we have in the sale and why they're in the sale. We have seven horses in the preferred sale tomorrow. Um, what time does it start? Three o'clock. I think they start at three o'clock. Our first horse in the sale is Coupe de Ville. Coupe de Ville has been a very nice horse for us. She is a half sister to Globe Trotting, who is a very nice horse for us uh, along the way. Coupe de Ville is coming up on 100,000 made this year, is 100,000 plus, obviously, made life. Um, and has really put it together. Her last seven starts, she has, I believe, four wins in three seconds. Uh, and all her, her losses, I think, at least, at least for sure, the last two were just picked off, I believe. Um, gets around any size track. Doesn't really have any issues or any vices. She's been doing her work very, very well all year long. And uh, I've been very, very happy with her. Vet work-wise, very little with her. Uh, in fact, I, I can't think of what we've ever done with her. Maybe her knees a couple of times. But, man, she's uh, she's just been a, a really, really nice filly. Cupid Express is the next one. Who comes after Cupid? Cupid Express is the next one um, that will be selling on the sale tomorrow for us. Cupid was a nice filly. We purchased her midway through the summer as we were starting to acquire those numbers of two, numbers of three horses. Now, uh, keep in mind, I believe Cupid's got six parimutuel victories. A number of these horses that are being sold, at least ours, on the stable, uh, for the stable tomorrow preferred, um, a lot of them are fair wins. So they don't count in most jurisdictions. I know they do in Ontario, but they don't in many of the other jurisdictions. So uh, Cupid Express in particular, I believe, has six wins, as I believe also... Uh, Coop has six pair of mutual wins, although she shows ten victories. I think four of them were fair races at two. So Cupid Express, nice filly. Neither of these fillies wear trotting hobbles. They both can get off the car really, really well. They both get around any size track very, very well. And both are kind of nice horses to be around, I believe. Uh, the latter filly also, Cupid Express, is coming up on 80 or 90,000 made life also. So two pretty well-bred horses. Cupid not... Not maybe bred as well as uh, Coupe de Ville, depending on what you're looking for, but both are, are quality horses. The third horse, Gandalf the Black, um, we've had him since he was a baby. He's raced very well his whole life. At two, he was an overachiever, and that carried over into his three-year-old season. Whereas, uh, I guess we'll go over the equipment too. Uh, Cupid, uh, just knee boots, knee boots, trot boots, a head pull, and Murphy on the little left, I believe, on a half. Uh, very much the same for uh, Coupe. I think knee boots, shin boots, trotting boots, uh, head pole, and Murphy on the left. Um, Gandalf the black, knee boots, and shin boots on him. About a 57 or 8 inch hobble. Uh, he's a on the larger size of medium, I think. Um, and again, uh, head pole inside, line pole inside for this guy. He's paced 51 at Mohawk. He's taken a mark of 53 at Mohawk. He shows quarters in 27. 26 a couple of times on the end of it and is paced in 52 on a 5 8 uh, also just been a good horse from top to bottom uh, from day one the work we generally do on him uh, knees his feet you got to work on them they bother him a little bit and I believe if I'm not mistaken we've done his left stifle from time to time but really nothing uh, of late has bothered him who's up next uh, nothing but a dreamer I think everybody should be paying attention to this guy uh, five wins in a row He's got a mark of 53 and four. That this is a trotter that he took uh, that he took two starts back uh, last night. He was an easy winner with the earplugs in and 155. Now those last two wins are important. Those were eliminations for the Harvest Series. He is going to be the prohibited favorite going into the Harvest Series. Now the reason we're selling him, obviously, he's going to be worth the most heading into a stake final. The final goes for 40 or 45 thousand added. Somewhere between the latter part of 40 into 50 thousand will be the final. So you have a big chunk, a big chance to pick up a chunk of your money uh, heading into um, getting some of your money back heading into the final. And that's, this is exactly why we chose this time to sell him. Uh, we've kept over three-year-olds into the four-year-old ranks. We can move them around. We know what works. But at the same token, uh, we already have horses in Dayton racing. We have horses in the Meadows racing and in Northfield racing. So those places were getting a little crowded anyway. And at Mohawk... You have the three-year and four-year-old 50,000 claimer. His allowance would make him a 75 claimer. And on January 1st, he'd be a 62,500 claimer, I believe. 
and I suspect at the very least he'd be extremely competitive, if not probably one of the best horses in those races. So when you look at that, we, we, we kind of know what nothing but a dream is worth because I know where he can race and do well. Uh, but we are looking to uh, to move him on simply because those ranks are full and even in that 50, we're going to have a horse in there, maybe two, uh, throughout the fall and into winter. So it made the most sense to sell a horse that's sharp as attack and on fire right now when we already have horses situated in the classes he'd be fitting. So that is why nothing but a dreamer's in there as far as rigging for him. Uh, head pull on the left, uh, I believe line pull on the right, just a set of trotting boots behind and a set of trotting hobbles. You can check the videos, but I'm pretty sure I'm bang on when it comes to these horses so far. Who's next? Who? J.K. Mickey Mantle, another horse uh, coming into his own. You know, we bought him. He did pretty good for us at this three-year-old season. Took a mark of 51. We had, gave him time and brought him back, and he was kind of flat when we brought him back. He wasn't great in the summer. As the fall has come, he's really come to life. Uh, Mike Wilder was a winner in 51 and four with him, four or five races back at the Meadows. He's paced between 51 and one and 53 and a piece every start uh, his last five or six races. In fact, in, in, and I'm not just saying this to embellish the story, but J.K. Mickey Mantle raced in the mud in the pouring rain the other day, lost his left front shoe, and was a closing second place finisher in 152 and a piece in the mud. And it was muddy and pouring rain. He, probably one of his best races in recent memory was his last start. So again, a horse that is really starting to round into shape. And all of these horses have and can race on a half mile track. All of them are suited for anywhere you need to race them a half, five eighths, or seven eighths. Who's next? No, unique. Uh, unique style. Another trotter, I bought this horse, a former $105,000 yearling by Chapter 7. Good family. Um, Mark and Ray had raced him all along. We bought him, brought him here. He's done okay. You know, he's not a killer, but he's sound. He does his work. He put him on the gate. He can leave like a leave like a runner. I took the hobbles off him uh, two starts ago because I wanted to race him without them. And I actually put him on the run in the first turn. Had I just let him trot forward, he would have been fine. But I was kind of wrestling with him to get him in, in behind another horse. And he just kind of shuffled his head and, and rolled off stride. That was more on me than him. Uh, having said that, he's quite comfortable with the trotting hobbles on. Chris Lems drove his last start. He raced great. He was second in, I don't even know what he was second. He was second, I can tell you that. But he's been racing okay. Sound. Nice colt, well-bred, um, get around any size track and does his work well. Again, we just have horses kind of tripping on one another right now in the numbers of two, three, and four throughout the tracks. Um, if they can't do a mohawk, which I don't think Unique Style is a mohawk horse, but if they can't do a mohawk, then what we generally look for is uh, either Dayton, um, even Yonkers sometimes with Megan, but pri primarily Northfield and the Meadows is where we're kind of, it's kind of, I guess, our, our sorting station, if you will, right now is that area. And when it comes to the horses we're racing in those general areas, we're full up. So there has to be some give and take, and Unique Style is on that list. I believe we have one more horse, do we not? You missed one, because there's there seven. Another page? No, there's six. You missed a horse. No. Sliver. Sliver of fashion, thank you. So Sliver of fashion, quite it's frankly, uh, he was the first one, yes. So my wife has missed the first one. The first horse selling tomorrow is a Sliver of fashion. And a Sliver of fashion is the same type of thing as Cupid. We bought this horse in the summer to fit classes. He had a number of fair wins. I think he only has three or four parimutuel wins still. My concern going into last week was that he couldn't do in the class above. I've since maybe modified that. Of all the horses we're selling tomorrow, and we have prices set on all of them. None of these horses, this isn't a fire sale. Of all the horses we're selling tomorrow, a sliver of fashion is probably the one I'm going to be watching the closest. I'm sure we will get what we're supposed to for nothing but a dreamer. And we'll get what we're supposed to for Coupe de Ville and those types of horses. Coupe de Ville as a broodmare alone should be worth more than, than what we assume she'll, be, what we she'll bring tomorrow. So I'm not concerned about any of them. But a sliver of fashion... I really like the way he raced, and I know that, of course, it's shocking. You're going to find somebody say they like the way the horse they're selling raced last week. But I actually did like the way this guy raced through the eight hole. He got out of there. I think if I had it, just pushed him second over. I think he's first or second. But he finished up well, and he's really starting around into a nice horse to race. We've been letting his hobbles out, taking the weight off him. He put his nose right on the car. He can scream off the car. You can do what you want with him. I like the horse, and I actually do believe do believe he can do in the class above now so there's a horse especially if you were going to say Anthony are any of those seven horses 
a horse that maybe you're worried might not sell to where he should, that might be the guy. And if he doesn't, then we'll simply retain him and enter him into go the next week. That's the guy I, I really, I don't know if, if everybody's going to swarm towards a horse like him. He's trotted in 56 a couple of times in his life. He won quite easily at Northfield Park in 59 or two minutes. And, and I, I actually do like the horse. None of those horses that we've talked about or mentioned have any issues, have any problems, have any soreness problems of any kind. I believe that all of those seven horses will be quality horses and will probably fit in. And as I like to say to our clients, make immediate impacts as soon as they enter a stable. Now, take it all with a grain of salt. I am the guy selling the horses, and I do. I am biased. But at the same token, I, I believe that those are seven horses that will do anybody in any situation some good moving forward. So just thought I'd bring everybody a video. Again, for those of you that know what we do at the stable, these videos are frequent to all of our clients. For those of you who don't, this is generally how we operate. We like to keep everybody informed. And I thought, well, as we keep all of our clients informed, maybe we'll keep everybody else informed when it comes to what's going on at the sale. So tomorrow, 3 p.m., the preferred online sale platform will be housing seven horses for the stable. I mentioned all of them to you. Now you know everything you need to know about those horses. Take care.